Life is a gift and a journey. Towards what goal are you journeying? This gift of life, where do you want to spend it? With whom? For what? Whoever you are, wherever you are, God is inviting you to be His special messenger, to bring His word, His love, His joy, His peace to all peoples through the communications media. The sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Thanksgiving intentions of Jess and Dr. Melly Dizon and family. Nida S. T. Mr. and Mrs. Julius V. Anoos and family. Mr. and Mrs. Donato Lalien. Mr. and Mrs. Damian Chavez. 100th birthday of Mrs. Fermina C. Santander. Jose Aguilos and family. Mr. and Mrs. Donato Lalien. Gloria and Thelma Lu. 21st wedding anniversary of Mr. and Mrs. Franklin Resentes. Miss Liza Napala, Yanyan Luchoa, Rudy Abelia, Pinky Ho, Josie Agujetas, and Mrs. Lourdes Casinabi and family. For the intentions of Mrs. Matilde Lacap, Divine Mercy Healing Community members, Richard Balili on his birth anniversary, Miss Teresita Villa Abrilie, Ginoo families of Cecil Snack Inn, Casinabe family, Miss Belia Bentulan, Miss Beng Belsita Mejos, the management of the University of Mindanao, Mr. and Mrs. Manolito Bibay, Mr. Ben Villano, Mr. and Mrs. J. Ibasco, Michael, for the birthday intentions of Pretty May Castillo. Complete healing of Mila Villa Abrilie, Gina N. Cabalatungan, Trinidad Molina, Marivic Riva, and the complete healing and birthday intentions of Elpidio Barcelona. Blessings and good health of Mrs. Francia Marasigan, Harmonic Singers and their families, Flora Villaluz and family, Christian Liego, Ryan Lacno, Vincent Kevin Pimentel, James Ryan Bukay, Romy and Companions. For the eternal repose of Edgar Lumaino, Jose and Isidra Ruste.
Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. The Lord cares for his people as good shepherd cares for his flock. As the good shepherd, he invites us to this Eucharistic celebration where he instructs us by his life-giving word and strengthens us by his body and blood. Let us receive him with faith and thanksgiving. To preside our Mass is Reverend Father Richie J. Gamaya, Social Communications Director, the Harmonic Singers of Davao City will joyfully lead us in their dynamic singing. Come, let us sing and joyfully celebrate. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Dear friends, coming together as God's family, with confidence let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for He is full of gentleness and compassion. Together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. And I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, 
Let us pray to be kept faithful in the service of God. Lord, be merciful to your people. Fill us with your gifts and make us always eager to serve you in faith, hope, and love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The kings and religious leaders of Judah called to care for and protect God's people, abused their authority, and put the people in danger. God intervenes and promises salvation for his people. The first reading. From the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them, 
so that they need no longer fear and tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Saint Paul points to Jesus as our mediator with the Father and with one another. After reconciling us with a God, he breaks the barrier of hostility that keeps us apart. The second reading. From the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked, and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, 
for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember in my high school and elementary days, and maybe some of us also would agree that my favorite and some of us favorite time during the day, especially in school, is recess time. In fact, that is considered also as one of my favorite subjects. When the bell rings for recess, okay, it's recess time. Let's go to the canteen or under the mango tree and eat uh, our uh, merienda. And not only that, especially when the teacher announces tomorrow at, at this time, we will have no class because there will be a meeting. And so we can go home early or we can relax and play. And teachers maybe are smiling because, you know, students are happy when there are no classes because they can have a break. Now, break time are times for us to enjoy. Break time are times for us to rest. Maybe today, even for us who want to go to rest, it would have been easier, unlike in the past, because we just go to the internet. And even a year before, we can already book our tickets for Singapore, for Hong Kong, for Europe, for a day or two for a vacation. And we always prepare because it's a day of rest. Maybe if there were already e-tickets during the time of Jesus, Jesus would have said to his disciples, let us look at the internet and have a vacation. Let us rest for a while. And because today in the gospel, this gospel reading tells us, after the disciples returned, they reported everything, what they had done and taught. But Jesus did not mind the report. Jesus said to them, invited them, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For Jesus, it was important for him to take a rest. But in the midst of this longing, people were coming over in great numbers because they want to be cured, they want to be healed, they want the service of the Lord. So that even before the disciples were on the boat to a deserted place, People were already knew where they were going and they hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. So that when they arrived, Jesus had pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them so many things. Instead of resting, and Jesus was so always compassionate to them at the service of them. Maybe in this gospel today, my dear friends, we can learn at least three things. The first is that it is very obvious in the gospel of today that in the mission of the Lord, the disciples took part in the mission of the Lord. In other words, there is participation in the mission of the Lord. Jesus did not do everything by himself, but Jesus appointed the twelve. Jesus chose disciples in order that he may have a committee. He may have a commission so that he may not do everything, but that his disciples may also take part. His disciples participate in the mission work of the Lord. The good Archbishop, our new Archbishop Romulo Valles, explained to us when he went to Rome a couple of weeks ago, he received for the second time as Archbishop the pallium, like a medal received by a bishop, which is a symbol of his authority and his service to the diocese. He told us, he explained to us, that before they receive this pallium, four of them in fact receive in the Philippines, this pallium is placed on a platter, and on the eve of the day before they receive it, this pallium on a platter is placed on top of the tomb of St. Peter. On, on top of the tomb of St. Peter. 
And the bishop explained it to us saying, this is very symbolic and very special. Why? Because St. Peter was the vicar of Christ. St. Peter was considered as the first pope. And he, being a bishop, participate in that mission of the Lord. Like St. Peter was appointed. And we priests take part also in that commission without being connected to the bishop. The bishop without being connected to the pope, our ministry is useless. Our ministry would have been in vain, in vain because we participate in the mission of the Lord. Maybe for us, not only for lay people, it's also good to note, no matter the excellence, no matter how noble our mission might be, without the connection to the church, without being connected to the authority of the Lord Jesus, separated from the church, separated from the authorities of the church, separated from the people of God, our talent, our ability, our sense of service, no matter how good we are, maybe in the field of lectors, in the field of singing, in the field of healing, in the field of extending charity to the poor, if we are not connected with the church, if we are separated from the church, then we fail to participate in the mission of the Lord. The disciples took part. The disciples participated in the mission of Jesus himself. And this is also one of our challenges today, to think and to ask ourselves, do we consider ourselves as somebody who participate in the mission of Jesus by respecting the authority of the church. And secondly, it's also very obvious that even the people who knew they were leaving, they came to know about it. They came to know where the disciples and Jesus were going. In fact, if we listen to the gospel very well, it was said, they hastened there on foot. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. Imagine Jesus and the disciples were already planning to go in a desert, to a deserted place. But people who knew it arrived at the place ahead of them. Was there a taxi? No taxi yet. Was there a train? No train yet. On foot. But they arrive at the place ahead of the disciples and ahead of Jesus. The second point might be that people who believe in the Lord were full of enthusiasm. And take note, the word enthusiasm has a root word in theos, enthusiastic, in theos, meaning these people who believe in the Lord, they were full of the presence of God. And because they were full of the presence of God, they were always alive. No matter the difficulty, no matter the hindrance, it was okay for them even if they walk by foot. Even if they go there, they arrive even ahead of the disciples. They were full of life. They were enthusiastic. Despite the difficulty, despite maybe the hindrance, these people, they really took the trouble in arriving at the place because they want to have Jesus. They want to be with Jesus. They want to be healed. They want to be with him. They were full of life. They were enthusiastic. In my experience uh, last week, a friend of mine just invited, and I learned that in this child, in a little child, there is full of enthusiasm. Not only positive thinking, but belief that he can make it. I think if we believe that we can be with Jesus, we can handle things no matter what. Uh, the, the priest, in this experience, a companion priest of mine was eating and he was a bearded priest 
And there was a little child about eight years old. He was looking at my companion and said, why did you become a priest? And so the priest said, because I want to respond to the call of God. Are you married? The child asked. No, I'm not married. The priest answered. Why are you not married? The child questioned again. Because we priests live a celibate life. What was your dream when you were still young, when you were still a child? And so the priest answered, I wanted to become a priest already. What about you? The priest asked this little child. What do you want to become when you grow, when you grow up? And this little child said, I want to become the president of the Philippines. And all of us laughed. All of us laughed. We cannot imagine his dream. And then, in a little while, she, he was thinking. And he said, Ah, Pino has a lot of problems. Maybe I could settle for vice president. I cannot make for a president because he has a lot of problems. Maybe vice president would be enough. And look at, look at the life. Look at the enthusiasm of this child. Yes, it was an innocent answer, an innocent imagination maybe, but call it whatever you may call it, in the eyes of a child, in one who has faith, in one who has belief in Jesus, he is full of life. There is enthusiasm. Like these people who believe that they can reach Jesus, they can be with Jesus, and, and it would be possible always because with God, everything is possible. Now, maybe for us, the question might be, are we also full of enthusiasm? Do we believe that no matter the difficulty, no matter the challenge, we can reach Jesus? And thirdly, the last point, when this Jesus disembarked and he saw the vast crowd, Jesus showed pity. He showed compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. That's why in the first reading, we were told of the call of the good shepherd. And we responded in the responsorial psalm, the Lord as our good shepherd. And the second reading also tells us that in Jesus we have peace because he reconciled us as good shepherd. He reconciled us to God. Jesus was full of compassion. Despite the busy schedule, despite maybe that they were not able to eat, Jesus still took time to attend to their needs. In other words, Jesus felt what they feel. Compassion. Cum with patire. Not patiri in Cebuano. No? Patiri means to feel with. No? To feel with. Meaning compassion, to feel with what they feel. If they are sad, then you also be sad. Understand. Put yourself in the shoes of others so that you may be able to understand them. Jesus also understood them. Jesus was full of compassion. They know that they need so much his attention, his care, and his assistance. That's why he even did not say anything against them, but instead attended to their needs. The question might be, my dear friends, when someone comes to us and we know he needs us, we know he will be asking our assistance, what is our reaction? How would we accept him? When, for example, your child has a problem and he failed in class maybe, or as a problem in his life, life, how do we handle it? Do we feel with what he feels? When somebody is in need, maybe of any assistance, material, our time, our talent, do we also show positively ourselves to respond to his need? Do we have the heart who listens and knows what others feel? Jesus was full of compassion. So my dear friends, in this Holy Eucharist, as we continue to pray with all our intentions, let us remember that all of us also share in the mission of the Lord. Let us continue to participate in the work of salvation by submitting ourselves to the church, submitting ourselves to the authorities, so that as we were baptized, we share, we took part, we participate in this mission. And that 
like the people who knew no bounds of any hindrance, who knew no any difficulty. They believed because they were enthusiastic. They believed that they can reach Jesus. We also pray that we always become enthusiastic ourselves and that like Jesus, we live a compassionate life, showing attention, showing care, especially to those in need of our care, in need of our love. And so my dear friends, we pray for true participation, enthusiasm, and compassion. Let us not together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Through Jesus, the Heavenly Father shows His love and care for us. With faith and confidence, let us pray to Him. Lord, protect your people. Lord, protect your people. For the shepherds of the church, His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI, all bishops, priests, religious, and lay leaders. May they be shepherds after Jesus' own heart, protecting God's people and leading them to the fullness of life, we pray. Lord, protect your people. For government officials and civil leaders, may they follow the example of Jesus, God's humble servant who stoops down to serve and ministers to the people's needs, we pray. Lord, protect your people. For all who are lost, lonely, and depressed, may they experience the love of Christ through the concern and help of others, we pray. Lord, protect your people. For all of us gathered here, may we pray for the gift of vocations, support our shepherds in their ministry, show them our love and appreciation, and understand and forgive their limitations, we pray. Lord, protect your people. And for all the intentions offered at the beginning of this Holy Mass, we pray. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. Do not consider what we truly deserve, but fill us with your graciousness and mercy. We ask this through Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for the good and the good of all His children. Lord, bring us closer to salvation through these gifts which we bring in your honor. Accept the perfect sacrifice you have given us. Bless it as you bless the gifts of Abel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, O powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. So great was your love that you gave us your Son as our Redeemer. You sent him as one like ourselves, though free from sin that you might see and love in us what you see and love in Christ. Your gifts of grace lost by disobedience are now restored by the obedience of your Son. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints in their song of joy. gives you praise all life all holiness comes from you through your son Jesus Christ the Lord by the working of the Holy Spirit from age to age you gather a people to yourself so that from east to west a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so the sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with His Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May He make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints. With Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, and all your saints in whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Benedict, our bishop, Romulo, and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. With confidence, we now offer to the Father the prayer Jesus taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other our sign of peace. friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited in His holy banquet. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but in the way I shall be. Faithfulness. 
kiss and love. I walk by the quiet waters of Prayers of the sick. Father, your Son accepted our sufferings to teach us the virtue of patience in human illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers and sisters. May all who suffer pain, illness, or disease realize that they are chosen to be saints and know that they are joined to Christ in his sufferings for the salvation of the world, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, may these mysteries give us new purpose and bring us to a new life in you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.